Good evening from here in New Hampshire and greetings to everyone tuning in either live or as you view this at a later date. My name is Peter Wickman and I am the Director of Admission and Financial Aid here at the White Mountain School. I'm really excited to give an introduction to this evening's A Closer Look presentation on student and residential life and what that really means here at the White Mountain School. <clears throat> if you've tuned in for either of our uh, other two Closer Look sessions on student-driven inquiry or academic coaching, you'll know that these webinars are planned to give you a deeper understanding of the unique aspects of these programs at the White Mountain School. If you haven't seen any of the previous sessions, but you want to, you can find them on our Facebook page and you can also find them on our YouTube channel. For tonight, we have a wonderful lineup of students and faculty that participate in and oversee a wide range of different activities here. As you can imagine, boarding school life is much more than just what happens during the academic day in the classrooms. A lot of what happens in the student life arena is what helps to give the White Mountain School its character, uniqueness, and personality. The programs, co-curricular activities, clubs, and leadership opportunities that you'll hear about this evening are the perfect complement to <clears throat> our student-driven academic programs. The White Mountain School's mission states that we're a school of inquiry and engagement. And this extends far beyond the classroom. Tonight, you'll hear about how students engage with hobbies and interests, passions and new pursuits, challenges, and just plain fun. Before turning it over to our Director of Residential Life, Eben Kopp, I need to remark, like I do each week, on how truly grateful I am and how truly privileged we are to be part of this White Mountain School community. 2020 may be behind us, but the global pandemic is not, and neither are the very real challenges that so many students and families in this country are facing each day due to continuing political unrest, a, an ongoing reckoning on racism, and environmental policies that are allowing for our planet to be changed forever. Meanwhile, here at White Mountain, our students are back in remote learning classes this week and will return to campus in waves over the next few weeks. And we are engaging with the tumultuous challenges around us as best we can. We acknowledge that not everyone is in this position and I for one continue to be grateful for those privileges. I'm also incredibly grateful for the wonderful people you're about to meet. As I mentioned, we are just getting back into the swing of things here and to our colleagues and students, I extend a sincere thank you for taking time out of your evening to join me and to share your experiences with our viewers. But enough from me for now, tonight is about getting a closer look at one aspect of the White Mountain School experience, and that is student and residential life. Whether you are well on your way through your application or just getting started, this will provide you with some examples of the activities, opportunities, and personalities that exist here. Please do utilize the comment function or the Q&A box to ask questions as they come up. I will be able to ask them to our presenters at the end and type answers to the presentation or to your questions as the presentation is happening. Now, give me one moment so I can pull in our panelists and I will turn it over to our Director of Residential Life, Evan Kopp. Hey there, Evan. All right. Hey, Pete. Hey, everyone. How's it going? Um, so like Pete mentioned, my name is Evan Kopp. Um, I'm the Director of Residential Life at the White Mountain School. Uh, I live in uh, one of the dorms dubbed the new dorm, uh, both a noun and an adjective. It's, it's, we just built a dorm and it's also called the new dorm. So I live there with my wife and our two dogs. Um, and tonight you're gonna hear from a few students and a few faculty members about some of the pillars of our residential life program. So you're gonna hear about dorm life. You're gonna hear about our advisory program. Um, you're going to hear about some of our co-curriculars, and you're going to hear about our weekends. 
Um, and like Pete mentioned, if you have questions about anything student life related, please do ask them and we'll do our best uh, to answer them. So I'm gonna turn it over for the rest of our panelists to introduce themselves, uh, starting I believe with Ricky. Oh no, Ricky, are you there? Maybe we can skip to Rachel and come back to, to Ricky at the end. Sure, thanks Pete. I'm Rachel Van Wylen. I am the dorm head for Hill House, which right now is where we have some of our younger male identifying students living. And I also teach art and coach cross country here. Lillian? Hi, I'm Lillian. Um, I'm a junior here at White Mountain. I've been here for three years. Um, I'm from Vermont. Um, I'm a proctor in the new dorm, which is sort of like a hall counselor as well as a ambassador for the school and on citizenship committee. Um, and I love um, dancing and skiing and biking and hiking here at school. Um, and one thing I love like about White Mountain is the access to like the outdoors. Um, and that's been super nice to have such a welcoming community um, to the outdoors. Thanks, Lillian. Ian? Um, hey, everybody. I'm Ian. Um, I am an academic coach here in our learning center. Um, I also work as the uh, Burroughs dorm head, which is our um, 10th, 11th, and 12th grade male identifying dorm here on campus. Um, I also work as our athletic director, um, planning our sports and co-curriculars here on campus. Um, I also coach three uh, seasons here. Um, one of the things I love most about White Mountain School, I think, is the, like Lillian said, the connection to the outdoors, but also just the small school and community atmosphere here. Um, it's super cool uh, to get to call everybody by their first name for like students to call teachers and the headmaster by the first name, I think is a super unique thing. Um, it's something I really like about White Mountain School. Awesome, thanks Ian. Sylvie? Hi, I'm Sylvie. I'm a three-year junior and I'm a day student. Um, and I'm originally from Virginia, but now I live here in Bethlehem. And um, I'm a delegate for equity and inclusion here and a student ambassador and also a day student proctor. Um, and things that I love to do at WMS, uh, honestly, just spend time with my friends around campus, um, like little moments between classes, um, things like that. And I would say my favorite thing about WMS is the, um, importance of activism and how much the faculty and teachers value it and encourage it in students and also probably field courses are one of my favorite parts. Awesome. Hey, thanks so much, Sylvie. Uh, Kara. Hey, everyone. I'm Kara and I teach biology and physics here at the White Mountain School. I also reside in Hill House with Rachel, I'm her neighbor, and I'm the dorm head for Carter, which is our female identifying dorm for the girls that are in grades 11 and 12. Um, and my favorite thing about the White Mountain School, one of my favorite things, is how a lot of the activities that we're about to speak with you um, about are really student driven. Um, we have um, faculty here that are interested in a wide range of activities as well and wear many different shoes, but but truly the students are the driving force behind a lot of what we do on our on our weekends. Thanks, Kara. Ricky, are you there? Yeah, I'm here. Um, hi, I'm Ricky. Um, uh, this is my third year at White Mountain. I'm a junior this year. I'm a local student. Um, I am a lead student ambassador and also the vice president um, I really love WMS because it, it's given me so many opportunities to grow as a person. And I love all of the just opportunities outdoors. I've gotten super into rock climbing, kayaking, just, it's all great. Hey, thanks so much to everyone.
Um, so we have a couple questions that were uh, pre-submitted by uh, some of our viewers. I'm going to start by kicking those off, but to those that are viewing this live, if you have questions, um, I'll remind you, please feel free to use the Q&A box if you're watching on Zoom or the comment function on Facebook, and we will do our best to answer those questions as they come in. So our first question, I'll kick over to Lillian and Kara, um, and that is, what is it like to live in a dorm? What's the biggest difference from just living at home? So I, um, I'm a boarding student, obviously. I'm the proctor in the dorm, so I sort of like, I'm like a hall counselor, and I, I love living in a dorm. It's like this own little family that you create, so my close friends have been like my roommates or people down the hall um and it's just so nice to be able to like have that community um that's very comforting and obviously you don't have your like family with you but it's sort of like a new family in a way um and the biggest difference um I say for me it's like I don't really have it like I can't cook or anything um but I get I have like a whole little um setup in my room with like a fridge and a coffee maker and a soda stream so like to be honest it's not for me not very different from living at home besides not having like my parents around um but there's plenty of like adults around if you need to like need someone or need to ask a question or need help so yeah i'm probably going to end up echoing a lot of what lillian said so I, I i do feel like in hill house we're a little family here so i have a son who's in grade nine and um the boys in the storm are mostly grade nine boys and yeah we feel we, we have this great little community so rachel and i are in apartments downstairs and um the 10 boys live above us on the second floor. And um, it's great because the boys have like a measure of independence where they have to do their laundry or as Lillian said, make sure they get fed. But of course, Rachel and, and I and the other um, dorm parents that we have are here to actually help support and make sure these things get done. Um, and we try to do that with a lot of, of care and fun. So Rachel, for instance, is famous for baking treats for the boys from time to time, or we'll do a food run to go get them treats from, I don't know, McDonald's or whatever they like. Um, we have common rooms in the dorms where um, students, things look different sometimes during COVID, but eventually the students will all be in the, in the common rooms together, um, playing games. Um, yeah, that's, that's a big one is, is the video games on the TV or sometimes like listening to the news, watching elections or, or what have you. So I do feel like we have these, these great communities within our dorms. It's awesome. Thanks so much, Kara, and to Lillian as well. Um, also to the panelists, if anybody wants to chime in with anything to piggyback, um, do feel free to. I'll just kick it off to a couple people to get the ball rolling. Um, our next question is about advisory. Um, and simply put, what is an advisory and what do you do with your advisory? Um, Rachel and Sylvie, do you, do you both want to take a crack at this? Sure, I would love to talk about this. And one of my favorite things at this school is that I get to be an advisor. So I like to think of the advisor as a little bit of a cheerleader. Um, I'm on my advisee's side, whatever happens. If you're a little bit behind in a class and you need to figure out how you're gonna handle that, if you maybe got into a little bit of trouble, um, your advisor's there for you when that happens. Um, but your advisor is also there for you to create a sense of community and to do really fun things. Um, just to give a little bit of a sense of the things we might do together in an advisory group. We have advisory dinners, which are really fun. Um, we meet together in the mornings, talk about things, play a game. Um, Pre-COVID, we used to do advisory breakfast. I'm hoping that's something that's also coming back again once we're done with all this pandemic. Um, your advisor is often going to be there for you um, right before the holidays. Maybe you get a little note and a little treat, all that kind of thing. Um, also, I should say your advisor is somebody who hopefully you really feel a connection with. So um, your advisor might be assigned to you when you first come to the school, but then if 
you start to feel like there's another adult on campus who you'd be more comfortable confiding in or who like you just like their energy, you can ask and get a new advisor. So that I think is an important part of the puzzle that this is not just a random person who is assigned to you. Yeah, um, I'll also just be piggybacking off of a lot of what Rachel said, but um, I feel as though your advisor is one of your strongest supporters at school. And if you're ever in like a situation where you would need to talk to somebody or get advice on anything, um, or you just need to vent about something, your advisor is a great person to turn to. Um, so they serve that purpose. But like Rachel said, you also do a lot of fun things with them. Um, like me and Lillian, we have, we're in the advisory together. Sam is our advisor and we love Sam a lot. And um, he always has like really fun ideas for us. Um, like one time for a advisory dinner, like Rachel mentioned, we made pizzas at his house, which was super fun. Um, yeah, so it's really just a good support system and it's a fun little group to be in because you kind of go through things together with your other advisees. Um, yeah. There is there is a, a question in the chat that I just want to answer as well about what the uh, ratio for an advisory is between advisor and student. Typically, an advisor will have between four to six advisees. And I'll add one more comment about advisory as well, <clears throat> which is that. Um, uh, for parents, for any adults that are tuning in, um, advisors do serve that that really important role for students. Um, they're also the primary contact for families. Um, so and when parents have questions about how their child is doing or if their child needs support in a certain area, or even if you just wanna send something up or surprise them on a holiday or their birthday, uh, the advisor is, is gonna be your principal contact and the person that is gonna be most easy to reach uh, should you ever need anything. Um, of course, you can get in touch with teachers and administrators uh, as well, but um, uh, as Rachel and, and Sylvie really clearly put it, that advisor is the student's go-to person. Um, so next, switching gears a little bit, we had a question about um, what are the co-curriculars and sports that are offered here at White Mountain? Um, what are the requirements and what do students participate in? Um, and I figure Ian, this one would be teed right up for you. And then Ricky, you can hop on right after Ian. Uh, sure. So um, here at White Mountain School, I'll start with the requirements piece of it because that's one of the things I, I feel like I get asked uh, first when I talk to families and respective students is, what do I have to do? Um, and it's more of like, what do you get to do? Um, and you get to do something all three seasons here, um, which is pretty unique. Um, one of the unique things about that is they're not all sports. Um, we offer what we call co-curriculars, um, which are more of like elective activities, um, but it's an activity that you are in for the entirety of a, of a season. Um, we offer on average about 25 to 30 um, different activities a year. Um, that depends on weather and numbers of participation and interest um, per season. That usually ends up being about 12. That's because some of our um, activities are offered multiple seasons a year. So rock climbing, for, for instance, we offer in both the fall and the spring, if it's something that students are super, super interested in and want to do it multiple times, or if it's um, something that happens to be one of many interests, they can still access it. Um, and indoor rock climbing, for another example, happens all three seasons. Um, we do, as I said, have things that are not particularly viewed as a sport. Um, our ratio there is about for every two outdoor um, and active sport offerings we have, we do have one um, activity that is a co-curricular. So things like that are eco art, um, working on our farm and our farm and forest program, helping out in our community service program, um, all sorts of things. We also um, don't, we don't expect you to have any sort of prior knowledge for anything when you show up here on campus. 
um, because of safety concerns with certain activities. Um, there is some prior knowledge you need to have on day one. However, we recognize not everyone has access to the resources needed to have that knowledge when you you know, get to campus. So we work to make sure you can gain that knowledge beforehand. So if mountain biking is an interest to you, you can learn to ride a bike over orientation. Um, if skiing is something that's of interest to you, we can help you, you know, acquire gear because we know not everyone has access to gear as well. And we can help you learn through a lessons program. So everything we have here um, is accessible to everyone um, and does not require knowledge or skill before you get to campus. But if it does have some knowledge or skill necessary on the first day, we'll work with you to, uh, to get you there. But uh, I'll probably let a student take over in terms of what they do since I, I get to coach three things um, every year. Uh, this year I worked in our soccer program, uh, boys and girls soccer program. I coach our competitive freestyle ski team and our boys uh, lacrosse program as well. That's all I got, Peter. Oh, um, so when I grew up, I just went through like the public uh, school sports system. So just doing the like cliche things like baseball and soccer. Um, but when I came here, um, I tried rock climbing, ice climbing, um, and whitewater kayaking. Um, and I was a complete noob, uh, super beginner. Um, and the great thing is the school has all the gear that you would need. Um, so you can borrow it from them and it's entirely completely beginner friendly. Um, so anyone can join, um, but it's also still challenging for like people um, who have a lot of experience in the sport. Um, and it's been a really great way to learn about myself and more about the outdoors um, going through these sports programs because they're really fun. They're really interesting. Um, they're the best part of my day um, is getting out of class and going to sports. Um, yeah. If I could just add on to that a little bit. Um, I love team sports and being on a team and I'm still able to do that here too. Um, like I plan on doing soccer and lacrosse until I graduate. So <laughs> um, there's really options for whatever type of sport you want to do. So if you are a team sport kind of person, you can do that too. Yeah, so I think that's a really good point. I'll actually add on to that because that brought up another thought for me too, where if we don't have something and it's something that interests students here, um, like I said, our offerings fluctuate. Um, there are offerings that we're offering this year that haven't been offered in four years because there was an interest for it. And now all of a sudden there is. So we do offer certain things like team sports that um, are consistent year to year and we'll have them and they will stay and they will stay for a while. And then there's also always that option to add new things, um, change things. So if you're a student who's, you know, looking here as a prospective place and you don't see an offering, uh, chances are we could still absolutely make it work as things change here every year. Hey, thanks so much, everyone. And Lillian, I just, I think the stuff you do is cool too. So do you mind sharing um, the co-curriculars and activities that you participate in? Yeah, so I actually do most of the year, I do two sports. Um, so in the afternoons I do, in the fall I do mountain biking, which has, I wasn't a huge fan before I came to school. And now it's like, Evan's my coach. It's like one of my favorite things. <laughs> um, and then in the in the winter, I do um, skiing, which I also have always loved. I'm from Vermont, and I just grew up with it. Um, and so those are in the afternoons. And then in the evenings, um, we have a dance studio at school. So I get to, like, do dance um, in the evenings and then still get to do the other things I like. Um, and the fall, the spring, I mean, we're still, I'm still figuring out what I'm going to do then. Um, I tried whitewater kayaking, um, so it's, uh, some people love it. <laughs> uh, I will not be doing that again, but it's great to like try new things because it's a pretty low commitment. Um, so yeah. Thanks for jumping in there, Lillian. Um, uh, one of the, the remaining elements of our student and residential life program um, are clubs. 
And so uh, we had a, a student write in, are there clubs? How can I get a club started if there currently isn't one? And um, uh, how do I get that going? Um, and I figured Eben, maybe you and Sylvie could answer this one. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, similar to what Ian was talking about with co-curriculars, how there's, you know, co-curriculars that are offered every year. It's, it's, it's the same thing with clubs. You know, we have sustainability club, yearbook, social committee, et cetera. I, I think though, the thing that for me makes White Mountain really unique is that our clubs are super student driven. Um, so a, a, a quick example of that is a few years back, I had a student who perhaps jokingly, although I don't know, came up and said, Evan, I really want to start a yo-yo club. And I was like, that sounds awesome. Let's start a yo-yo club. And we ended up for a, a short stint being by far the most popular club on campus. We had tons of kids coming every afternoon to do yo-yo. Um, and it was, it was, it was a ton of fun. Um, so like, you know, they, they certainly range. We, we have clubs sort of along the lines of yo-yo club that is just a, you know, a ton of fun, tons of kids showing up and having a good time. Um, and then we, we've got clubs that are doing some pretty serious work on campus, um, citizenship committee, sustainability club, student council, things like that, that, that are pretty, pretty committed and, and producing some pretty awesome um, things around campus. Sylvia, I'll, I'll turn it over to you. Yeah, so uh, you mentioned social committee, and that's a pretty cool one because you work with the um, chair of social committee who is voted on and um, you can directly suggest activities or weekend events that you'd like to see happen. And then they will tell that to adults and then it'll probably happen. So um, that's one that I frequent. Um, and then my friend Arlie, she started an activism club last year where we would just meet once a week to talk about changes we want made or um, new ideas and um, that was one that she just thought <clears throat> she wanted to see on campus. And so she made it happen. Um, and also clubs aren't like a commitment or anything. If you go to one, one week, you don't have to go every time. You can kind of jump around. Um, I think same goes for starting your own club. It's not like you have to do it every week until you graduate. Um, it's just a cool thing you can try out. Thanks so much, uh, Sylvie and Evan there. Um, I, I realized I skipped right over this question. And when you mentioned social committee, you made me think of it, Sylvie. Um, so one of the, the most common questions that we get uh, is, what do students do on the weekend? And Lillian, maybe you and then Kara can jump on that. Yeah, so um, on the weekends, there's a bunch of like activities on campus and in a normal year off campus, um, we still have some, but things are a little different because of COVID. Um, but there's trips to like downtown um, Littleton um, to get food. Um, there's trips to like go hiking. There's pretty much if like Sylvie said, if you want to make something happen, you you pretty much can. You just have to to let someone know. Um, and then also just like hanging around campus with your friends is one of my favorite things to do. I go on a ton of walks around campus um, with my friends because it's especially this year because um, like COVID restrictions and stuff, but we're still, they've still managed to um, have a lot of opportunities to like, there's been like McDonald trips and um, Shaw's is like opening up for an hour just for like us, which has been super cool. Um, and so, yeah, there's like always things to do and yeah. Um, yeah, again, I'm going to echo some of what Lillian said. So there's so many, there's so many different things planned on the weekend from like she said, hiking, or um, there's a group that always wants to play board games um, in the library. We've watched movies together, especially around Halloween time. Um, and uh, that some of the faculty has also planned like some really fun weekends from time to time. So right before the winter break, we had a taco truck that came to campus and a cotton candy machine and a group of us walked over and cut down a Christmas tree from, um, luckily we have a tree farm right across the street. 
And then another group of students decorated it. So yeah, we find opportunities. Oh, and Halloween, Halloween was fantastic. So we had like a spooky walk through the, the trails at night and scary movies and the faculty here, we all had uh, candy. So the students could actually trick or treat on campus since they couldn't do it in Littleton. So, um, and one other thing, again, as everyone has said, is the students themselves come up with a lot of the activities. So we have a student in grade 10 who really wanted to do this murder mystery theater, and it was fabulous, and it's been requested time and time again. So, so yeah, we can, we can make things happen according to student interests, for sure. That's great. Lillian and, and Kara. Thanks so much for those examples. And Kara, I'll give you some kudos for this because I've seen a number of kids that have requested it. Um, things like stargazing and learning about um, astronomy, those are things that we, we have such amazing uh, views up here because of the low light um, pollution. That Can I elaborate on that for a second? Because it's like one of my favorite White Mountain moments of yeah. this entire year. It's like, again, a group of students in the lunchroom were like, oh, let's go stargazing, let's do some astronomy. So we did this several times and by like the end of the month, there were 10 or 15 students out under the stars with ukuleles singing songs together. So it was just like, to me, a perfect white mountain moment. Awesome, thanks so much. Yeah, that's that's the story I wanted to, to have told. Um, well, the last broad category that we have uh, refers to student leadership opportunities. And uh, Ricky and, and, and then Eben, perhaps, maybe you could talk about opportunities for student leadership here at White Mountain, um, what, what they are and how students uh, can participate in them. Yeah, um, I can start with that. There is a ton of student leadership um, opportunities. Um, one of the things that I'm involved with is the ambassador program. So that involves working with uh, admissions and in a normal year, giving tours to prospective students. Um, so I'm a lead ambassador this year. Um, and so that just involves like taking on the role with more deeper uh, work, uh, more responsibilities, that type of thing. Um, and then I'm also a member of student council. Um, and so student council at White Mountain is four students, a uh, president, a vice president, uh, a social chair, and um, I have no idea what the fourth one is. Um, judge? Yeah, judge. So the judge, um, they kind of run citizen, citizenship committee. Um, the president um, uh, runs uh, morning meetings. Uh, the vice president, which is me, um, I take morning meeting notes. Um, and then uh, the social chair works with the social committee and uh, plans weekend activities for everybody on campus. Um, but uh, there's also the Proctor program, um, which Lillian talked about earlier, that you can get involved with. Um, you can start your own club. Um, there's just tons of opportunities um, to do all sorts of things. Thanks, Ricky. Um, R Ricky really nailed it. And instead of just reiterating what he said, I think it'd be awesome. Uh, both Sylvie and, and Lillian are, are proctors. So I'd love to hear from you both about a little bit about the, the, the proctor process of, of becoming a proctor and, and what that entails for you. Uh, yeah, so um, being a proctor is sort of just being a representative for a different section of the student body. So there are proctors from each dorm and there are day student proctors. Um, and it's a really cool leadership position because it sort of is what you make it. Um, and so when you apply for proctorship, you then work with the adults either in your dorm or for day students, um, work with Paula, who I guess you guys don't know. <laughs> um, and you just work to communicate with adults about the student body's um, experience from your particular section, if that makes sense. And just to be like a voice for the student body and to organize events. And I think um, Lillian can go into more detail about what you do in a dorm because it's different for day students because there is no dorm for day student proctors. But it's just sort of being a representative and communicating with adults about students' needs and how they're doing. 
Yeah, as a um, proctor in the dorm, I feel like we sort of act as like a bridge between students and teacher um, where we we obviously have help from our um, our dorm parents. I'm in Eben's dorm, so I like communicate with him um, and then communicate what we have come up with to like the the, the students in the dorm. Um, and my job as like a proctor um, is to one, just be there for like the students. Cause oftentimes it can be much easier to come to another student instead of going to like a teacher if you like need something. Um, and then also to like make sure that the dorm is like clean, everyone's room is clean. Um, and just making sure that like the dorm is a good space to live in. Um, and so it's been nice to like, um, be able to be like, like a, a leader for the other people in the dorm. Um, and yeah, I've really enjoyed it. Awesome. Thank, thank you both for that. I also just want to mention that another piece of our student leadership program, which I, I think is unique, is the fact that we, we really try hard to offer a, a ton of different leadership opportunities. So it's not just a few seniors, for example, who are student leaders on campus. There's really opportunities to, to move into a student leadership position at any point in, in a, a four-year trajectory at Dwight Mountain School, um, which, I, which I think is unique. And it pretty much essentially, if, if a student is interested in taking on a leadership role, there's some level of leadership at Dwight Mountain School that they can they can start in. So yeah, thank you. If I can just tack one thing on to the end of that, um, just an example of a kind of unique opportunity. I have had a couple students who were really interested in the arts, um, wondering, well, what could, what would it look like to be a leader in the arts? I've had students organizing fundraising arts events. I've had students working as a TA in an art class. So like getting to teach a lesson every now and then. Um, on our field courses, we have uh, student leaders and some of those have like really specific themes like course I'm the art teacher so I'm thinking of the arts ones but um so if you if you are if you're not looking for like a massive leadership role but you do want to be a leader and have some kind of role there's like Evan said there's always something um to all of you thanks so much those were wonderful examples and um and answers there um I have one last question that I'd like to to ask all of you uh, before we wind down for this evening. Um, and so perhaps we'll go in the same order that everyone introduced themselves in. So Eben, this will go to you first. Um, the viewers here are most likely going to be people that are interested in boarding schools. And so as faculty members and students at a boarding school. Um, what is one piece of advice that you would give to students that are exploring boarding school for the first time? Let me just ponder that for a second. <laughs> um, no, I, I, I think the, the piece of advice I'd give for, for a student who's thinking about boarding school for the first time is is when you're looking around and, and when you're visiting those schools, really take the time to, to talk to some of the students um, and, and, and get a sense of, of their perspective on the school and, and, and ask them to sort of share some of their experiences with you. Um, I, you know, I, I think that you'll find at the White Mountain School that our students are awesome and they're, they're super accepting, they're, they're, they're kind, they're genuine. Um, so I, I'd say really talk, talk to students, talk to adults too, but really ask students about their experience and, and try to get a sense for sort of who you could be spending the next one, two, three, or four years of your life with. I'll go next. Um, so what I would say is, so I don't come from a family or a community where lots of people choose boarding school. And one of the questions I used to get when I first started working here, which was like five years ago, was, who, who chooses boarding school? And honestly, the answer is like lots of people. It's not one kind of person. And so I think if you're kind of looking at boarding school and you're like, am I a boarding school person? I mean, the reality is there's so many different people here with different interests. Um, I think you're going to find your niche here. You're gonna find your people, even if you haven't always thought of yourself as someone who, oh, I would go to a boarding school. 
but to jump in on what Rachel just said, I actually, this is the first time I've worked at a boarding school. So I've been teaching for a really long time and I've never had this boarding school experience. Um, and as Rachel said, like, there is something here for everyone. We, we feel like a community, but yet we are a community. We have this, this tight knit um, group of people, but yet for people who like also need their quiet time, we're on this beautiful, amazing, serene campus. So there's also, despite the fact that you're surrounded by people whenever you want to be, there's still like a level of peace and, and solitude that you can find if, if you need it. Lillian, how about you next? Boy, I, I'm still trying to think of, I'll just say like, like make sure you're gonna be like comfortable in the place that you're choosing. Um, I feel like oftentimes, like even after maybe not that long, of like visiting a place or whatever, you can like feel if, like it's somewhere you want to be and just make sure that it's like, a place that you can really like see yourself um, and see yourself like thriving. Um, and yeah, which White Mountain has been that for me. I think I'm next. Right. <laughs> um, I would say, um, while I agree with Lillian, like make sure you're, you know, it's somewhere you're going to be comfortable. Um, don't just look for things that you're used to and don't make your decision based off just things that you're used to or comfortable with. Um, look for those things that are brand new, things you may have like never even heard of before or sound interesting or challenging. Don't just set the, the difficulty level to easy and then cruise through. Um, make sure you're, you're looking for things that you're, you're not used to or haven't seen before when you're, when you're looking. I can um, answer, even though I'm not a boarding student, I have a lot of friends who are boarders. So I don't know, I feel like I somewhat know the experience. Uh, sort of similar to Rachel's point, I think that you should choose somewhere um, where you don't really have to change any part of yourself to feel accepted. I think that it's really tempting when you're looking for a new environment or when you're joining a new environment to try to shift like who you are or like what you project outwards um, to like assimilate. But, you know, at any place where, like William said, you would really thrive, you shouldn't have to do that. So, um, yeah. For me, uh, I think uh, the fact that White Mountain is such a small school is my favorite part. Um, Oh no, we lost Ricky. Well, Ricky, I'm not gonna try and finish that answer for you, um, but perhaps to our viewers, I'll be able to, to type it in the comments after the fact. Um, oh, that's a bummer. Anyway, I will give one last answer so we don't have to um, end on a, a technological malfunction. All of you had such sage and, and wonderful advice. The piece that I think is, is really important, and this has been touched on in a couple different ways, uh, is that when you are at a boarding school, you have opportunities to do so many things. And so go all in. Um, put yourself out there and try new things. I loved hearing how um, students and uh, adults on this webinar spoke about things that they had done for the first time. Um, that is, it's such a, a rare opportunity to have in your life where you're surrounded by a community that can embrace that and can give you access to that. And for me in particular, when I think about students that are exploring boarding school for the first time, you're gonna be away from home. Um, you will likely be in a, in a new geographic region and so learn everything you can about it and take advantage of the people around you and all of the, the marvelous uh, you know, skills and interests and passions that they hold. Um, just to close things out, 
I want to thank our panelists once again. I really appreciate each and every one of you for both what you do uh, at and for the school and also just for, um, for being great colleagues and, and students. Um, to the viewers, if you have any additional questions, please feel free to reach out. It is the, the getting towards the end of application season for us. Our application deadline is January 31st. And so if you have any questions about your application, any outstanding materials, or if you need to get in an interview still, um, please do be in touch. Um, we will host another event next Wednesday, a closer look at the college counseling process. Uh, and I hope to see you there. So have a great night and thank you for joining.